peace in this house. That is from the 1979 classic Amityville Horror about an allegedly haunted house. It's a good example of a story that many people believe is true simply because it's been told so many times. Jim Underdown's team investigates stories like these, but he's not a ghost hunter. He's really the opposite of that. He is a skeptic, and he is the executive director of the Center for Inquiry in Los Angeles, where he tries to show people the errors of belief in pseudoscience and the paranormal. Hey, thanks for being with us. Hey, Jim. Uh, it's great to be here, great to be here. So, I, had, I had to laugh at your story earlier. Would you buy a house? Would you was, buy a house that they said was haunted? Well, you hear these stories all the time about people, oh, I'll give you $1,000 if you can spend the whole night in yeah. this haunted. I would do it for an Italian beef and a Diet Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> the ghosts never show up. When we get there, the ghosts are gone. So yeah. What about all these ghost hunter shows where we see they have these meters and all this stuff? What is that? Yeah. I like those shows. I know, but <laughs> all this gear, you know. Is that all garbage? Well, I mean, the gear is real. It measures electromagnetic fields. It measures heat. It does all this stuff. But who's to say that's a ghost? It's just measuring other stuff, and they're saying that means that's a ghost, and it's not. Well, the other thing, I think we have some video of this from when I did a piece on on the paranormal cops out of Chicago. They oh, yeah. had a reality show with these meters that say like Radio Shack and it actually says like Ghost Hunter, you know? Yeah. Um, and the other thing you hear is audio recordings. I'm hearing voices on these audio recordings. What it, What is the explanation for that kind of thing? Yeah, a lot of times it's something garbled and they're saying that he just said Buchanan is alive or something. Um, and these are EVPs, and when we ask them to actually correlate an EVP to some actual information, no one could do it. It's all just interpretation of weird sounds. Like the ink blot, you see the face in the, because that's kind of how our brain exactly. is Exactly, and, and different people will get different words out of these recordings, yeah. so. Yeah. All right, let's get to some for examples uh, okay. that we want to get to. Tell us about the actress who experienced three weird incidents in her West Hollywood apartment in 2010. Okay, so this woman was freaking out. She had just moved into this old apartment building and all these, let's call her Angelina. I'm not gonna talk about her last name, but she was seeing all these weird things. Three things happen. Unidentified liquid in the middle of her kitchen floor, which had no source, no leaks, nothing anywhere near it. Then the light diffuser in her kitchen fell out of its frame just on its own. No one was anywhere near it. And then she was smelling these weird odors that were per permeating the apartment. Again, no known source of it. So she calls us up. She's like, I just moved in here. I'm, gonna, I'm ready to leave again. Can you help us? We went over there with just some simple tools. We measured the, the frame that was holding up the light diffuser. It was an eighth of an inch larger than the, the thing itself. So it was like a, a 16th was hanging onto this thing. Any time a door opened or there was some vibration, the thing fell on its ah. own. Number one solved. The pool in the middle, this clear liquid in the middle of the floor, first of all, we, we checked it just to make sure it wasn't like vodka or gin or something. Sometimes that yeah. brings you a ghost. And I looked down and I put my face on the floor and, and I learned that from a Columbo episode. He's always putting his face on the floor. And I found this little tiny rivulet, uh, dry riverbed of where this pool came from. We pulled out the refrigerator and found out that the coils were frosting on the back. Mm. It was cycling on and off. It would melt, make a, make a yeah. lake, and then the river would go away. Yeah. So and, we and didn't find out what happened with the, with the odor until we left. The manager of the building came running out afterward. I think he was thinking we were shooting, a, we had all these cameras, we were shooting a commercial or something. And, and she said, uh, I, I, we asked her, you know, why would there be any reason for apartment 14 having a weird odor? And she said, well, 13 was painted the other day, so that's probably what you would smell. All right, two more cases to go through real quick. In 2002, a couple of writers in Hollywood Hills saw a demon at the end of their bed, and, you know, they weren't sleeping, so uh, 
Well, there was a question about whether they were, they were probably ha had a waking dream. Uh. What was weird about this, a lot of people have waking dreams and find, see ghosts and Martians and all sorts of things in their bedroom. What was weird about this is they said it was the same thing at the same time. That's very unusual. So we went there and we interviewed them. We separated them in two different bedrooms and filmed the interviews and asked them about what happened. And it turned out that they really didn't see the same thing. There were serious details about their descriptions that were different. And we found out that the husband was on a heart medication, known side effect, hallucinations. Ah, and finally, let's get to this historic McKenzie House case in Toronto. McKenzie House is a 200-year-old house in Toronto, Canada, once owned by the uh, first mayor of Canada. And people kept reporting hearing these clanking sounds and these rumbling sounds and uh, ghosts walking up and down the stairs. So our guy, Joe Nickel, in 1972, went there. You have to just show up sometimes. And he interviewed the caretakers of the house. And then he went next door to Macmillan Publishing, also an old building and talked to the super there, and it turned out that McMillan next door had a parallel staircase just next to a very small gangway, and the sounds of the night crew walking up the stairs oh. was transferring over hmm. to the haunted house, and all sorts of sounds uh, rumbling in the basement, and even when they fired up the heating system, uh, you could hear it next oh. door. So before we let you go, is there any case you've heard that you're like, I can't explain that, like that does sound weird? Well, there's lots of cases that we just don't have enough information to make a proclamation about, but listen, most of these cases have regular prosaic scientific explanations and you shouldn't get worked up. What do, you, what do you do about, you, you've attended a lot of exorcisms and that's becoming a, a big deal around the world, that these are kind of uh, becoming more, more common, more frequent. You've been to them, what, what is it that you see? Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of sad because, um, first of all, you, there's no twisting the head around and floating over the air, none of that stuff you see in, in the movies. Um, most of these people, unfortunately, are mentally ill. They believe they are possessed. They're experiencing some sort of schizophrenia. Uh, some we even f uh, talked to and found out that they were once on their medications, went off their meds, and then the demon came back. So you have to believe in demons. If you don't believe in demons, you'll never need an exorcism. Well, it's fascinating stuff. You can check out centerforinquiry.org and Jim welcomes all challengers. Go to cfig.org. C-F-I-I-G. Oh. Two eyes. Did I read that two wrong? Eyes, yeah. Oh. yeah. No, it said C-F-I-G. And you give people to, uh, some money if they can prove paranormal activity. Quarter million bucks Quarter if you million. can prove it. Get, really? Go online now. That's right. <laughs> Ooh.